have reached the final week of the regular season in the National Football League, and the Cincinnati Bengals are feeling pretty good despite getting a loss. Chris Rankle, Richard Skinner here on the Sports Authority this Sunday night. Skinny, uh, here we are. I, you know, the Browns can celebrate. They beat the Bengals twice. I don't think Cincinnati is going to lose any sleep over that, though. No, I don't. And, and honestly, I, I thought the backups, once they settled in, played pretty well. The defense played pretty well all day long. Brandon Allen showed some rust early. And then, honestly, I thought he played a pretty nice second half. He, he really moved the football, made some good throws. He was really inaccurate the first half. I think some of it was the speed of the game. I even asked him that after the game of, did it take you a little while to settle in? He said it did. And, and you could see some of that. But listen, I, as much as the goal was to win, the goal was to not get your starters hurt. And guess what you came out of there with? You had a bunch of backups get hurt and even deep backups that everybody was freaking out about depth. Like, no, a lot of the, I don't want anybody to get hurt, but a lot of these guys were probably not even going to dress next week anyway. Not, Ricardo Allen probably would have, but not many of them would have. So you got out of this game the way you wanted it. You played a pretty good game. You got backups, some experience. You got Brian Allen, some meaningful snaps. And you still go in the playoffs with all your main guys healthy because they'll all come off the COVID list. Fighting for the bye week, right? You want the one seed in the bye. Right. Well, this was kind of their bye. This is the way they treated this. And everybody's wringing their hands of, well, you want your team sharp. You want, well, the, the team that's going to be the one in each of the divisions is not, or each of the conferences, are they going to be sharp or do they want the bye? You want the bye. And I thought Joe Burrow was really honest this week on Wednesday when he talked about the mental time off helping him as much as the physical time off because it is a grind. It really and truly is. So I, I think they're in a really good place. You got exactly what you you wanted a little meaningful snaps and you get out of it completely healthy and Zach Taylor after the game wanted to win said all week they weren't going to let this one go away just came up a little bit short but happy with the guys who played it was kind of a strange second half the offense only had three possessions um, you know defense held them to seven points there and and our guys fought hard you know all the way through that onside kick so um, we had our opportunities we, we didn't make the most of some of them but I, I thought the guys that took the field today really uh, Gave us a lot of heart and effort and uh, gave us an opportunity to win. We just fell a little bit short. And a guy who did play, obviously we hit on it with Jamar Chase, becoming beating Chad Ochocinco or Johnson's record. I don't know why I keep calling him Ochocinco. That's all right. He Johnson. calls himself Ochocinco, so you're fair. It's all right. If he calls himself that, you can call himself whatever, that. Whatever you want to call him. He beat Chad's record today. Uh, just a cap on what has been a phenomenal rookie season. Probably rookie of the year, you would assume. I would assume. Here are the two seasons. Now, I wanted to do this because – at the very bottom games, Jamar did it in 17, Chad did it in 16. Now, Chad needed a lot more catches than Jamar did. We're going to see a lot of records falling left and right. Do you put a little more credence on the guys who did it in one less game, or it doesn't matter? Do you? No, somebody asked me that today. Unless you want to start prorating this and just start going with per-game things, and maybe if you want to do that, that's fine. But years ago, and we're not talking a ton of years ago, 50 years ago in the 60s, it was a 12-game season. Then it went to 14 games, and then it went to 16 games. So where do we draw the line of records? And I think that kind of went away with the Roger Maris uh, Babe Ruth home run record, right? I mean, it just it, the record is what it is. You can argue the semantics of, of games. Uh, and and I, I thought Chad, I think Chad tweeted out a goat emoji to, to Jamar Chase after he set the record. Good for Chad. Uh, I think he understands how hard that was to do. So, yeah, I, I get that argument of it. But at the end of the day, it's still a cumulative total. And we all understand, hey, this happened in one more game. But it wasn't like he suddenly got 193 yards today. They got him a couple of catches just to get the record. You know, maybe last week if that was the case. Maybe instead of throwing it uh, down the field to somebody else at the end, they would have thrown it to Jamar Chase. I mean, who knows? So, um, no, I, 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 I get the argument we've we've had different marks along the way cumulative is cumulative in my opinion now Jamar Chase I forgot about this until it was brought up in the post game when he was drafted he said he was going to set out to he break did. all the records and everyone kind of chuckled like all right rookie coming in he's going to learn has him on the quick. mirror right he's got him on the mirror he accomplished one of them here is the all-time leading single season receiving record after the game I was just telling you no know, it's just saying that I could do anything I put my mind to you know and I came into this season trying to do exactly that and uh, I, I achieved a lot of stuff that I wanted to do this year. I uh, still got a lot more to do. Hopefully, I could break some playoff records. And the Bengals certainly hope that he will. 